Welcome back guys or welcome if this is your first time here. I'm Vision here with Brian Entertainment bringing you guys in our video. Today I'm going to be talking about Fear the Walking Dead it, as a whole. I'm not going to be talking about any particular season. I'm going to be talking about the entire series as a whole. Now Fear the Walking Dead is something you're interested in. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon. That would have missed any more Wa Fear the Walking Dead content from me moving forward. Now let's begin. Now, as I start, I'm just going to start by saying that I please ask that anybody who's watching this and comments, please remain civil and respectful towards all everybody's opinions, because this is going to be a bit of a controversial topic. So I just ask that you please remain civil or I will delete your comments if I see it as hate or, you know, bashing of other people. So I will state that right off the top. Now, as of late, everybody I feel I can agree that there's a lot of hate towards season four and season five of fear. And there's a lot of people that want Dave Erickson back and want these new showrunners gone. However, I'm going to say this right now, and you're probably going to hate me for this. But Dave Erickson is one of the reasons we're at, we have these new showrunners and why Fear the Walking Dead is as bad as it is to a lot of people. Now, if you go back and look at the ratings for season one. Season 1 started with 10 million viewers and ended with 6 million viewers. Within 6 episodes of on, within 1 season, they lost 40% of their viewership. Now, I know people might say it's only 6 episodes. Yes, but it's a show with The Walking Dead title on it. Even The Walking Dead, yes, it gained viewers. You want your show to gain viewers. You don't want to lose viewers. And that's what happened within 1 season. And that's on Erickson. That's not on anybody else but him. If he had crafted a better story, he would have dragged in more viewers. However, he didn't, so people dropped the show. The fact that it sunk or the ratings dropped in that short of a time period just further shows the lack of interest or dislike for the show. Like, really, if you think about it, it shows how many people either didn't like it or just didn't want to give it a chance. Then... I mean, even if you look at the story, I watch another YouTuber and he even said Fear the Walking Dead was practically Walking Dead Mythbusters. If you look at season one, every, the one question everybody always asked was, what happened to the military? Fear the Walking Dead answered that within season one alone. Oh, the mil you saw what happened to the military. Then you move on to season two. Now, personally, I find season two to be a complete and utter tragedy and mess all over the place. Again, going back to the Mythbusters, everybody always asked, why don't they just go on a boat? They showed us what would happen on a boat. And one of the things I got so mad about with season two, at least the first half, is they hyped up this whole thing with the boat, only to have it be gone within like the first few episodes of the season. And then you had Discount Herschel's Farm, which was pathetic, and like they're trying to, you know, I, I just hated that. And you had... Strand's friend who Nick rescued, I don't even remember his name, and he dies within one episode of being introduced to him. You had the pirates who could have been an interesting storyline, however, they're just dropped and we never see them again after one episode. Again, like, what is going on here? And then, we, get, like I said, we get to the, that place with Discount Herschel's Farm, and oh my god, I, I can't even begin to talk about where I hate this more. And then you got everybody splitting up in the second half. Nick decides to leave for stupid, idiotic reasons just because he doesn't agree with what his mom's doing. Uh, it, it's just stupid. I get Travis leaving, and I get that. But Nick really pissed me off. And then you got the, the second half with the gang. Now, okay, that's a, that was an interesting concept, but they don't really do much with them. They have them lingering in the background, Yet there's nothing much going on there. You just hear a few references. Oh, if we do this wrong, they'll come and attack us. And then everybody talks about Luciana, who was introduced then. And everybody's always like, she was such a badass. I'm like, she wasn't. What'd she ever do in season in, in season two that made her a badass? She covered herself up with blood, hung out with Nick a bunch, and then helped her people get up to the border where they were half of them were probably massacred. What did she actually do that was badass? Because within the first few episodes of season three, she was in a coma or whatever and then left the branch. So what did she actually do that was badass? Because I don't think anything she did was badass. Then you go to the hotel, like I just said. And my God, that place was a disaster in its own right. I, I don't even understand what happened with that. 
the the characters were annoying you you had the hotel manager and her cousin who locked the wedding people up and yet within one episode everything's hunky dory and like they're all sitting around having dinner sitting kumbaya like that was like realistically that would never happen and then you go to the season finale which is where i really lose my mind now you know travis beat up the two uh, kids and i think it's oscar i can't totally remember his name but oscar tries to stop him but you had travis who slams the door in his head and gives the dude like a brain injury and then later on you have his brother trying to heal him with the cousin and they're like holding hands hugging and crying and i'm just look at that like that dude was locked up by the cousin and was freed just a few days ago and they're already like hunky dory uh, th- this guy's their brother and friend like first off that's unrealistic and stupid like oh my god uh, that uh, where do i begin and then you get to season three and season three is probably renowned as one of the best seasons of the series but i find that to be i don't like season three season three just annoyed me okay so you start off like i said strand goes to the dam that's fine him and the old leader of the dam have some history that really isn't explained and then within an episode him and daniel you know stage a coup and you know save him then you got daniel now i like what they did with daniel daniel coming back i had no problem with my one biggest issue with his return though is his return episode and this is my biggest complaint with fear the walking dead to date is daniel he's walking down the street you know he's you know just that coming out of the burnt down you know ranch or whatever it was and he's almost attacked by a locker yet lightning comes down and and kills that walker now everybody talks about how the hot air balloon was jumping the shark the san antonio split was jumping the shark i'm sorry but when lightning comes down and kills a walker that right there is jumping the shark i am sorry that was the single dumbest thing erickson ever did but then you go to the ranch because this is another thing where i'm gonna go on a rant and this is a, one of some of the issues i have First off, Luciana. Okay, Luciana leaves after being healed up because she doesn't feel accepted. Okay, I can believe that the ranch was a bunch of racist idiots. So she leaves, yet she never returns for the entire rest of the season. And it's not like the actress had other jobs because I looked up what she if she had anything during that time. She didn't do any of her shows. So my question is, why didn't she link up with Daniel? That would have been the perfect thing to do. Keep her in the loop. Have her have a connection with Daniel. That way, later on, when Nick and them get to the dam, he's reunited with her. Don't make it have her show up in season four, you know, mysteriously not explained. Then you got Ophelia. Now, the thing I laugh about, and it's just, again, it's just circumstantial. And I know fans will just say I'm being, you know, I'm nitpicking. But Ophelia just so happens to end up with the people that are, are at war with the Otto family. That, like, that is just so happens to be who she's rescued by. Like, that, that uh, realistically, I don't believe that, that. Then you go move forward with the ranch. And one of my biggest issues with the ranch is that none of the characters were very well developed. Outside the Otto family, I can't remember any of their names. Any of the ranchers, they were insignificant. Except for Jeremiah, Jake, and Troy. None of the other ones did anything or had any significance to the show. And that's where the ranch failed so badly. I mean, look at Alexandria. Sure, you had like Aaron and Enid and who was it? Deanna. You know, the three like big characters when you first got there. But you still had other people like Spencer, Olivia, Tobin. Meanwhile, the ranch, you just had the Otto family. And it's just, but none of the characters were fleshed out. Then you had the the father being killed off in the mid-season finale. And they decide, the, the ranchers and the Native Americans decide to live together. Now, this is, the, this is my biggest pet peeve with Fear the Walking Dead. And I hate it so much. Is, is uh, Walker is responsible for the death of Travis in the premiere. Yet, Madison agrees to live with him on the ranch. Uh, reminder, he killed her husband, yet 
everything's all hunky dory, singing kumbaya on the ranch. And then you got everybody's favorite a- episode with Alicia, with the ranch, and Native Americans in the bunker. And my God, that is one of the worst episodes ever. And I don't care what people say because everybody will say that's the best episode. That is trash. 100% trash. Because, think about it, Alicia has to kill all these people. Yet, like I said, none of them were fleshed out. None of them did anything. You don't care. Why do I care about some random lady she's talking to if they have no connection? If they have no, you know, if I, if they haven't been developed enough for me to care about? Why do I care about that lady? Why do I care about any of these people if they haven't been fleshed out? And that's my biggest issue. Why didn't Erickson flesh out these characters? So then you got her surviving the, the bunker stuff. She ends up leaving for idiotic reasons, runs into discount Michonne, and ends up at a uh, trade post thing. Meanwhile, you know, they uh, Madison and, and Taka and Strand end up there. And you meet, get introduced to the uh, biker group, the Proctors. Now, another thing that I hated with this is the Proctors felt shoehorned into the show just to b- create a big finale, which ended up being bad. Like, the the idea of the trade post was good, but it felt like a background dress, dress setting. Like, they didn't really do much of it. There's so many good stories they could have told, but they never used it. So, that, that just annoyed me more. Troy and Nick begin forming a, a relationship only for it to be destroyed within a few episodes later. You got the damn finale, which, I don't know, that just annoyed me more. You had... The guy who rescued Daniel die pretty much as a red shirt with no significance. The woman who Daniel had formed a friendship with dies with no significance. Ophelia is killed off unceremoniously previous to the finale, which came out of like, why? It just felt stupid and forced. I mean, I get why she died because the actress didn't want to be on the show anymore due to starting a family. So I understand that, but it still felt forced. Again, the Proctors just felt forced. You know, I never felt like Proctor John was ever any threat. He never felt like he had this commanding dark presence like a a governor or Negan. So it just, everything felt like Erickson did nothing. And by the time you reach the end of season three, the ratings dropped to two million. Between three episodes, you went from ten or three seasons, you went from ten million to two million viewers. That's eighty percent of your viewership dropping three seasons alone. And I'm sorry, but that's the reason. Whether they say he left to work on other projects or he was fired, that's the reason Erickson left and was replaced by the two people we got now. When you lose eighty percent of your viewership, that's bad, and you're bad at your job. I'm sorry, but that's really what it comes down to. He's showrunner. It, the loss of viewership is on him. I'm sorry, but two million viewers, that's not, gonna, that's not saving a show. That's, like, that's just bad. A procedural show gets two million viewers, and sometimes even higher than that. Like A failing procedural show gets two million viewers. That ain't good for a Walking Dead show. And you might say, but the ratings are bad now. Yes, but if you look at them for season four and five, while the ratings are low, they relatively relatively remain stable and fluctuate. They are they have dropped a little bit, but here and there they will drop, but then they'll come back up. They're staying relatively the same. Like that everything that happened within those three seasons is on Dave Erickson and he caused the ratings to drop. If he had crafted a good story, a better story then the ratings wouldn't have dropped that low, and he would have actually gained viewers. However, he didn't, and viewership dropped to extreme low. So, yeah, I blame Erickson for what happened to Fear the Walking Dead. So, yeah, guys, that's my little rant on Fear the Walking Dead first few three seasons. As always, if you liked this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and share. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon. That would be missing more Fear the Walking Dead content from me moving forward. And you can go follow me on Instagram and Twitter, which are linked in the about section of my YouTube channel. As always, it's been Vision here with Binary Entertainment, and I'll see you next time.